Holly Dunn Pendleton is the only known survivor of the railway serial killer, and it kind of happened in a scene like this in Kentucky, right? That's right, in Lexington, Kentucky, in mm -hmm. 1997. Um, I was a junior in college at the time, and my boyfriend and I were at a party. We went to take a walk by the tracks just to go talk, um, and he, um, a man approached us soon after we got up to go back to the party, uh, and um, you know he was asking for money, asking for things. We didn't quite know why he was approaching us, um, but it just it was pitch dark. It wasn't a good situation, and. Uh, I can't say we really felt scared until we saw that he had a weapon uh, and then we, we were uh, frightened and kind of doing anything that he asked us to do, asking, you know, trying to get him money, trying to get, give him our credit cards, ATM cards, giving him what he wanted. Can you explain the scene a little bit? So you were just by the tracks, kind of sitting there, and did you see him coming? Did you? No, actually we were sitting um, right beside the tracks. It was grassy on the tracks where we were, right beside the tracks, so we were sitting there. Um, and he actually came, approached us from behind an electrical box um, and was hiding behind that electrical box. And we knew that he had been watching us because he even said some things um, that he knew that our friends had been there with us before. There were four of us, um, but our friends went to go back to the party before we did. So he knew that our friends had been there. So he had been watching us. And I'm, I'm not really sure how long he had been watching us, but he had been watching us there for some time. What kind of weapon and how did you know, the attack started after well, he went through and... I'm not sure what it was. It was either an ice pick or a knife that he really kept on Chris the whole time. Uh, he, you know, went through Chris's backpack. He had Chris get down on his knees. We were on the side of the tracks at the time. He had Chris get down on his knees and, um, you know, went through his backpack and, uh, it, you know, trying to find money, that I guess is what he was doing, but he didn't find anything. And that's when we started saying, you know, you do want our car, ATM cards, credit cards. Uh, and he just kept saying, no, I don't want any of that. Um, and, you know, just we could not figure out what exactly he wanted. Uh, he, when he was finished going through Chris's backpack, he actually tied up Chris's arms with his backpack, which I didn't quite realize that he was doing at the time. I couldn't really see what was happening, but he tied up Chris's arms and then he came over to, yeah, I wasn't far from Chris. He came over to me and took off my belt and tied my hands behind my back with my, with my belt. Um, and, you know, that's when we knew we were really in trouble, but again, you know, we didn't know what this guy had. He had a bag with him. We didn't know if he had a gun, if he had, what he had with him um, to hurt us with. So, you know, we're just trying to comply with whatever he wanted. Uh, and he, I actually, he actually pulled Chris. We were kind of up on the side of the tracks. He pulled Chris along the, along the gravel and along the grass into the uh, grass beside the tracks. And he, uh, it, you know, it looked painful, so I just kind of followed along. Uh, I, I, I went down to the side of the tracks with them, uh, and that's when, you know, he had us get down on our faces, fly, lay, lying down on the side of the tracks, and he ripped a shirt to make, uh, tie up our legs and to gag us. Um, he, when he gagged me, I actually stuck my tongue out so that he, the gag wouldn't work. I could still talk, and, you know, I had I'd never been gagged before. I don't know where I thought to do that.